if we're running code in a spreadsheet and that code is making fundamental changes to the spreadsheet, then the user needs to know that something has happened. It's not always evident if you're running VBA code that something is actually happening. The user can't see that. The user needs feedback. So we need to tell the user that a report has run. And ideally, we need to tell the user some helpful summary information. This is a really nice touch in spreadsheets, some helpful summary information about the report. If we can use Excel VBA message boxes to provide user feedback, then we can do those things. It's got to further improve the user interaction in our spreadsheet. The user is going to love it. So let's get into the spreadsheets. And we've got a routine here. Remember, we've got a routine that just um, lists the entries in, in this database uh, by gender. Just going to run this routine quickly. There we go, we've got our confirmation box from the previous video, and we can see that we've got this list by agenda. So we've won, run the routine, but how do we know the routine had finished? You know, there's no indication the routine had finished. Obviously, we're programmers, so we kind of get a feel for these things, but the user doesn't know. And I see this in lots of spreadsheets. There's a real problem with the transparency, if you like, of what's going on. The user can't quite understand this really, really decreases user confidence uh, in the spreadsheet. So ideally, once the code is run, we'd like something to flash up and we want some helpful summary information. How are we going to go about doing this? You might want to stop the video now and just looking at this routine we've got. Where are we going to put the code? How might the code work? So firstly, we're going to use our principle uh, of recycling. We've got to re recycle some code that works, this message box code. And I'm just going to pop it uh, down here for now. And I'm going to make it an annotation so Excel will ignore that for the time being. So we're going to have some kind of message box at the end to flash up. And let's just do something simple, actually. Let's do something to begin with. And let's just say uh, report complete. And there we go. And, and this is just a simple message box so I can use some code that I know is working. Make, make the tweaks, change the message box type to zero, the simplest message box. And then let's get rid of the uh, brackets here as well. There we go. So we've got a nice, uh, simple message box here. So how is this going to improve the code? Well, it should mean that now when we run the code, we're going to have requests for confirmation to begin with. Excellent. And then at the end, we've got this just very simple message box flashing up saying that the report's complete. I guarantee this is going to add value for the user. Getting um, inf timely information from the spreadsheet is going to build uh, user confidence. But I think we can do better than this. We can do better than just having a message box to say the report is complete. If you want to go to the next level, we want to provide some helpful summary information. What might that be? Well, it depends on the context, depends on what you're trying to do. So let's make some assumptions about this situation. Let's suppose that the, uh, the, the customer, if you like, is interested in how many people said no answer to this question. So that's the critical information they're looking for. We'd like that information uh, to flash up. So there's various ways to do this. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at two ways in this video. So what are we looking at? Well, if the entry in the database is no answer, we can see one here, then we want to count those up. So how might we do that? Again, you might want to stop the video, but let's think about the existing mechanism here. Well, we've got a loop here. Loops, super powerful. You'll see them in the videos on this channel all the time. So we're looping through. We're going through each line of code. So let's just think conceptually. If when we're processing this line of code, we could note down, if you like, that it's a no answer and then tally up, add up those no answers as we go along. That's conceptually uh, what we'd like to do. Now, what tools do we need to do that? Well, we're going to need a counting variable, one possible approach. One possible approach is to use a counting variable. And I'm going to say no, no answer, very confusingly. <laughs> Here we go, as integer. Um, so this means number of no answers. And then we're going to take this down here. We've got to look through the code and think, where are we looking at what is in the gender column? Remember, we've got the gender column here. And we can see here we're actually assigning uh, the value in the gender column to a variable. 
here. I'm not going to go too deep into this code, but this code, this line of code is interesting to us. So if we say here, if gender equals no answer, just going to check that in the database. Yep, no answer. So if gender equals no answer, then no, no answer, which is our variable name. Remember, we've declared a variable up here. Then no, no answer equals no, no answer plus one. So what are we done here? Well, remember on this line of code, I've helpfully left an annotation here, which helps me understand. On this line of code, we're assigning the value in this column of the database, the gender column, assigning that to a variable. So we can then put this short conditional statement in. If the gender variable equals no answer, remember that's the information we're interested in, interested in how many no answers are there. So if this variable equals no answer, then we want to increase our tally. We want to make this variable increment by one. And then at the end, this variable should give us the number of no answers, okay? Right, so that's good. <laughs> Having the information in a variable is helpful. You know, that's an intermediary step, but the user can't see the variables, of course. So we want to externalize this variable. How might we do that? Well, let's go down to our message box uh, at the bottom. And then we're gonna put the variable name here, which is no, no answer. There we go. And then we're gonna use this and sign, this ampersand, I, th I think it's called and sign which is going to link the variable to the text string. We're going to change the text string. You can see because I'm manipulating pre-existing code, it's a bit easier to do. This is the principle of recycling. No answers found. Found. Then the title of this message box, the end message box, should be something like uh, complete. There we go. Okay, so We've got this variable that's incrementing. If there's no answer, it's going to go up by one. And then this syntax at the bottom, the message box is going to display the value in the variable, but it's going to do more than that. It's linking to this text string. So it's going to say the number of no answers and then no answers found. Okay. The number of no answers and then no answer found. Okay, right, let's see how we do. So, you know, with code, it's always about trial and error. So save the file, control S, and then let's hit F5. Let's see what happens. We get our beautiful confirmation box. Yes, we do wish to proceed. And it's telling us nine no answer found. So that's interesting. How might we check that? Let's go back to the spreadsheet and we can see here. Yeah, we've got nine entries in this column here. So I'm happy with that uh, for the time being. So what we've managed to do there is in the code, we've integrated a mechanism to monitor, if you like, a piece of information. In this case, we're assuming that the user is interested in the number of no answers. So in the code, when we look at that cell, when we look at that column, we're just saying in the code, if the value here is no answer, then increment a variable this number of no answers variable, increment a variable by one. So as we go through the code, this variable is just counting up the number of uh, no answer answers, if you like. So it's a good example of the power of loops combining a loop together with a variable to get something done. And then we can harness that information at the end. Now, this variable, the no no answer variable, contains the number of no answers. We can then externalize, display, that variable, that's going to give us a super helpful um, feedback message box at the end. Let's run the code again. Yes, we do wish to proceed. Then we've got some nice uh, feedback there. Now, I did say I'd look at two ways of doing this. So let's quickly look at an alternative. Um, so rather than using uh, all these variables, we could just say to Excel, tell me how many values are in this uh, column here. How many values are in this column here? So we could probably do this in a single line of code, uh, but we're going to need we're going to need some tricky referencing here. So 
you could probably stop this video series now, to be honest, you've done most of the learning, but we're gonna use a nice referencing techniques technique to reference a range of cells dynamically, which I call range, 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 because we have to say range three times. So it's, we say range and then the beginning of the range and the end of the range. So this is gonna be sheets. Um, the name of the sheet is list by gender. And then the range is E4, is the beginning of the list. Okay, so this is the first, um, the first piece of information in this range, range, range uh, construct. Okay, the second piece of information is the final cell. So we're just gonna say dots XL down there. Okay, I'm gonna put uh, an underscore here pop an underscore in here to give me some extra room at the bottom there. Okay, I'm so gonna delete some of these spaces so you can see the code at the bottom here. Dot rows dot count. Okay, so this should be doing the same thing. What's this line of code doing? Well, it's specifying a range. So we're saying the range from E4 to the end of the list. That's what this dot XL down command here is doing. It's saying go to the bottom of the list then we've got a range and we're saying how many rows are in that range. Okay, so let's give this a go. F5, yes. Okay, we've got an error here. List by gender. So what does this mean? Dot rows, dot counts. List by gender, range E4, okay. Excel down. I'm just wondering if I need another bracket here. Okay, yeah, I'm missing a command here, end Excel down. There we go. And then another bracket, okay. Hmm. Let's see how we go now. Play the code, yes, okay. So we've got nine here. You can see that I was struggling with the code, but I'm perfectly happy to put that out on the internet because anybody who's putting videos out where it's all goes smoothly, it's not really an honest depiction of how it actually works uh, in real life, you know, I'm always, trying new things, trying things, and you should be too if you're trying to improve your programming skills. Don't be timid about it, try it, try it out. Excel will give you feedback as I just got there, and then uh, you can try to fix it. So anyway, we've, we've done a different way there to count the number of no answer answers, if you like, using this nice uh, line of code here. That's given us the critical thing, which is this nice feedback message box at the end. I'm just gonna finish this off. Five no answers found. Found and then complete the strip text string zero and let's say complete. Okay, and let's view that message box one more time. F5, play the code. Yes, there we go complete and that's exactly uh, what we're looking for. Okay, that's, so that's where we'll leave it, but I hope this series has been helpful for you. Message boxes are a great way to achieve user interaction with a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet that has good user interaction where the user is being asked for confirmation, where the user is getting feedback. The user can really be confident in that spreadsheet and be confident that the code is working for them. The code is not doing something negative, the code is providing timely information for them. And for me, user interaction supported by these kind of message boxes, it's a feature of a good uh, Excel spreadsheet. Hope this series was helpful for you and I hope to see you in another series on the channel.